Hey, this is Mike Freilink. I'm the pastor at The Gathering, and I'd like to welcome you today as you listen to this week's message. I pray it encourages you, challenges you, and draws you closer to God and His purposes for your life. Good morning, family. How are we? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Who was crazy enough to uh, stay up and see it in? Oh, my word. Well, no, no falling asleep. Uh, on me today. It's only a one-hour meeting, so hopefully you can, you can hang around for, for long enough. Um, but uh, I just can't believe it. Another year's gone. Can, can you believe it? I uh, hear a sigh of relief in some people's voices as they're glad to see 2022 gone. I think they shook the dust off their feet last night and said good riddance. And uh, whilst there was a lot of challenging things that happened in so many of our lives over the year, and I want to briefly address that in God in uh, this encouragement this morning that uh, I feel to bring before you, I think it would be very remiss of us to not just take a time and stop, no matter the challenge, and thank God for His goodness last year. Uh, No matter the tough times that we got through, uh, you're still here. He got you through. Bumps, bruises, scratches. Yeah, I know. But you're here. And so I think it would just be great to take the opportunity right now to give thanks. Father God, you are faithful. You are true to your word. And so we just stop right now in your presence as your family, as your sons and as your daughters. And thank you for your provision. Yeah, times were tough, but you you got us through. We thank you for your provision of finances, friendships, of community, your word to us, your faithfulness to us, even when we were faithless, when, when we missed the mark, when we messed up. But you didn't write us off, but you continue to welcome us with open arms. We thank you for your favor over our lives. We thank you for the growth that we experienced. We thank you for the revelation that we now walk in, Lord God. We thank you for the encounters that we had with you. We thank you for the encounters that we had with our communities. We shared the good news of Jesus Christ to our neighbors, our our work colleagues, the people that we saw in the street. We pray over those seeds, Lord God, that were sown throughout that year and pray that they would produce a harvest. But we give you thanks. You're a faithful God. You're a good God. You're a mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said... Amen, amen. Well, uh, it wouldn't be uh, New, Year's, New Year's Day without a few bad jokes. So, uh, what did, what did the man, why did the man stand on one leg at midnight on New Year's? He wanted to start his year on the right foot. <laughs> anyway, look, my New Year's resolution is to stop procrastinating. But I'll wait until tomorrow to start. <laughs> All right, that's it. I've inflicted enough pain. <laughs> But New Year's, New Year's is the time where, where people, most of us, Christians, non-Christians alike, pause for a moment to consider the possibility of making better choices in the new year, better choices than we made in the year gone past. We say things like, I'm going to put my phone down more. I'm going to read more. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to eat more. No, I mean eat better. Sorry, eat more. I, that was my goal last year and I nailed it. I ate more. My New Year's resolution. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to set aside more time for refreshment and replenishment, some more time for me. I'm going to be more ge- generous. I, I, I want to be more present. And while all of these goals are incredibly great endeavors, they'd be great things to, to try to implement in our lives. But I wonder at the end of it all, if we would to be more like Jesus and more specifically and and more pointedly for us here today, I wonder today, are you, am I more like Jesus right now than we were at the start of 2022? That's a pretty weighty question. I mean, if you would just sit in that space for a moment and consider it, I, I, I'm sure that you would find that Holy Spirit would bring challenge and encouragement and bring a wealth of revelation to you if you would just sit in that moment. Am I more like Jesus today, the start of 2023, than I was at the start of 2022? 
Because out of all the goals that we could set, out of all the things that we could chase, I pray that this year, that your goal would be Jesus. In your heart, in your relationships, in your behaviors, in your priorities in 2023, I pray that your number one goal is the King and His kingdom. Amen? Well, today I want to do three things. And we set a one-hour service, so I've got to get my roller skates on and move quickly. I want to do three things. I want to share a brief encouragement out of the life of Joshua. And we want to share communion together. What a, what a great thing to do on the first year to, to stop and pause and remember that everything that we do, everything that, we, that, that, that got us here, uh, everything that we seek to launch out and the place we launch from is, is, is all because of this. And so to have communion together as a family, I think, is wonderful. And we also, Kelly and I, at the end of the meeting, we'll talk about how we're going to do this in just a moment. But we want to lay hands and pray uh, for all of you and pray over this year and that what God would seek to do in your life and through you this year. Amen. So let's go. At the start of new seasons and new years, I'm always drawn to the life and the story of Joshua. This new leader of Israel, that all that they had come through had brought, and Moses had brought that nation up until this point. And there was a clear finish of the old, but also there was a clear start of the new. Joshua was the new leader of the nation, and he was carrying them from this point over to the promised land. And today, we too, like Joshua and the nation of Israel, stand both figuratively and literally on the edge of something new. And whilst there is something quite unique about the first of the first, really when it's all said and done, it's just another day. And even to say just another day is really, I think, to diminish the blessing of another day. And the thing that we, we get to celebrate is not just on New Year's, for us for the Christ follower, for the Jesus follower, every day and every moment is a New Year's day because new is what God does. He says, old things have passed. Behold, all things have been made new. New is what God does. But we stand on the edge of a new season. Joshua chapter 1, starting at verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Incredible revelation, incredible specific promise to Joshua for that nation, for that time. But a reminder for us that every place we set our foot as ambassadors of Christ, we bring Jesus there. A place where Christ wasn't before, he's now there because we take him in every place we set our foot is land that God is giving to us. I will give you every place that you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. So I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips and meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. So God spoke to Joshua and, and God speaks to us today, be, be strong and courageous. And so the assumption for me is that if God at the beginning is telling this company of people, is telling us as a gathering of Jesus followers to be 
strong, commands them to be strong and courageous. My assumption is, is that there's some things in the future that are going to require from us strength and courage. So buckle in. But the promise is, is that we don't do it, and, and, the, and the beauty is, is that we don't do it in our own strength. Jesus commands us today, as we set out on the edge of something new, be strong, be courageous. But then he goes on to say, be, be careful. I mean, ponder this, this word careful, to, to take care. And to think about the things that, that, that we take care of. I, I think about, you know, a, a birthday and, and, and you've got the birthday cake on the, on the breakfast bar or on the kitchen and, and you light the candles and then and someone is tasked with the duty of, of picking up the birthday cake and, and carrying it to, to, the, to the dining room table or, or outside to the alfresco areas. Everybody erupts in happy birthday. And the person carrying the take is, it takes great care. They don't want to be that person. No one wants to be that person that dropped the birthday cake. No one wants to end up on YouTube with the entire nation laughing at them as they drop the birthday cake. No one wants to be that person. So we take great care. We're, we're careful. We're thinking about what we're doing. We, we take great care. I think about when you get a, if you've had the, the privilege of having a new car. There's no scratches on the new car. There's no marks on the new car. And so the kids get around the new car. Hey, be careful around the new car. Be careful. Take care getting in and out. Don't drag your bags in. Be careful. We take care. The new baby. Oh, we take care. This is precious. This is something that's precious. I want to protect this baby and take care of this baby. Hold this baby. And here God says to the nation of Israel, be careful. Take care. Take great consideration about the word of God to you. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left. Don't deviate. Don't go down rabbit holes. Don't go here and there. Stay focused. Stay true. That you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you might be careful to do everything written in it. Then, God says, when? Then, after what? After we be careful to live our lives according to the word of God. Then, the promise is that we would be prosperous and successful. It's only as we determine to live deliberate and disciplined lives according to his word that we will be prosperous and successful. Don't focus on prosperity or success. Focus on his word. Live according to his word. And the promise is you will be prosperous and successful. Now, I'm sure you, like me, are not hoping for a year of lack and failure. Can I get a witness? Anyone agree? You agree? Oh, maybe you want it then. Okay, but uh, that's not what I'm looking for. But as the saying goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to, to fail. Because it's only if we live. The promise is only to those who live according to his word that they will be prosperous and successful. Now, while most of us in the room, if not all of us in the room, believe this to be true, the road to get there is, is, is often rocky. It's, it's bumpy. It's somewhat volatile. It's not always smooth sailing, is it? And uh, that can make life at times really difficult, really hard. The promise is straightforward, uh, but often the journey is not. And I just know, I just know that there are some of us here today that are just barely holding on to a word that maybe God give you, gave you in 2022, a promise that he gave you, something that's been spoken over your life, something that you've read out of scripture, and you've been holding on to it, and, and, and you've got dragged yourself over the line just to barely believe that maybe God could still do something through that word that he spoke to you. And the word of the Lord to you today is keep going. Don't give up. Go again. Luke tells the story of a group of fishermen that had been out fishing all night and had caught nothing. 
It says they were mending and washing their nets from the night's wasted efforts. Jesus comes along and says to them, go again. Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 5. Simon answered, Master, we'd worked hard all night. We haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they'd done so, they'd caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Here we have a group of fishermen who had been out all night fishing and they've come back with, I'm sure, a fair amount of uh, disappointment and frustration that all their night's efforts, all their energies, all their uh, time and, and money and finances that went came to nothing, came to naught. And here they are cleaning their nets, the nets that caught them nothing. How frustrating is it when you have to clean up after that which produced nothing. And it's here in that space that Jesus comes along and preaches from the mess, from the place of disappointment and failure, and he says, go again. When we've tried and it didn't work, Jesus steps into our worlds and he speaks his word to us and says, go again. I'm not sure who this is for this morning, but don't give up. Keep going. Launch out into the deep and go again. Don't let failure or disappointment stop you. Not when God has spoken. Let your cry be the same of that of Simon said, but nevertheless, at your word, keep going. Gathering in 2023, be strong and courageous. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be successful wherever you go. Lastly, before we head off into the new, before we can see our own Jerichos fall, we need to leave behind all the baggage that we've picked up along the journey to cut off those things that will hold you back, keep you down, keep you wounded keep you in unforgiveness, keep you holding on to resentment, keep you in the past, keep you in disappointment and, and disillusionment. Before we move from here today, I feel God encouraging you to say to let go of those things. Leave the past in the past. Look, allow God to reconcile and allow him to turn all things around for his good. He, he can get good out of bad if we allow him. For those that love him and are called according to his purposes, he turns all things together, uses all things for, for good, amen. Allow him to do it, but then once you've allowed God to reconcile, like leave the past in the past. Leave those behaviors behind that don't, that provide no eternal value. Leave them in the past. We need to leave them here today to cut them off, to cut off those ties and walk free in 23. Isn't that a good quote? Paul and I were talking about sharing on New Year's and uh, said about walking free. And he's like, walk free in 23. That rhymes. That'd be good. So you can remember that this morning. And I just believe that for so many of us this morning, that could, today could be the day where you could walk free from some of those things that have been holding on to you for so long. Maybe you've been holding on to them as well. That you could let go, cut it off, and see freedom come into those places and spaces in your life. Amen. For so before the nation could get to the promise, they've, they've come over uh, the, the, the Jordan. But before they could take Jericho, the city, there were some things that had to be dealt with. There were some things that literally had to be cut away. In Joshua chapter 5, starting at verse 2, At that time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. Sometimes in life there's some things that need to be cut away. So men... Line up. <laughs> Aren't you glad this morning that here it was quite literal? But today it's just figurative. There are some things that need to be cut off your life that can't come with. They, they represent the past. This was their identity in God. 
This was the mark of God for this nation, this, this, this whole thing of, of circumcision. And, and the nation had come through, as Scripture goes on to say, that, 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 that all those who were circumcised, they were a part of, uh, came out of Egypt, they died in the wilderness. And so here's this whole fresh generation of uncircumcised Israelites. And God says, before we can cross over, we've got to cut away. We've got to get rid of those things. You need to look more like me. You need to roll back the reproach. That's what this circumcision speaks of, this, 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 sh- this shedding of this reproach and this identity in God, this mark that you are my people. And for us to be able to walk free in 23, there's some things that we need to cut off, leave behind, get rid of. The Apostle Paul said, forgetting that which is behind, I press forward. We can't press forward until we forget that which has been. To move into those new places and spaces that God is calling us into. It was a writer of Hebrews that encourages us to throw off. I mean, don't just like, just shift it. He says, throw it off. Get rid of every weight. And every sin that does so easily entangle and ensnare us. You know, not everything that holds us back is a sin. The writer of Hebrews talks about two things, weights and sins. The sins that we do, they'll they'll definitely slow you down. They'll definitely cause you to walk with a limp. They'll definitely make it harder for you to get to the places and spaces that God has prepared for you, no doubt. But there's also just stupid things we do. Things that are just of, of no eternal value, weights that hinder and hamper. And and then the writer of Hebrews encourages us to throw them off so that we can walk free. There are things that you've picked up along the way in 2022 that can't come with you into 2023. Not not, not if you want to see prosperity and success. Not if you want to walk into the promised land, those things, places and spaces that God has promised you. Get rid of that baggage, those hurts, those fears, those insecurities, those disappointments. People have let you down. Maybe you've let people down. That you're disappointed in yourself. That you've been a disappointment to others. Whatever it is. And reconcile that with God. Do do business with God today. Don't walk from this place today. Carrying junk out. Leave it at the altar. Leave it at the foot of the cross. And walk free this year. Gathering as we live from and according to his word, we, st- we will step forward into a year of success and prosperity. But we've got to cut off those things that can't come with us, those things that will hold us back in the past. So I said, Kelly and I want to pray for you. Pray over you for a year full of God's blessing, prosperity and success. And that you would continually choose, that you would choose to live your life, that you would be careful to live your life according to his word. But that also that you are able to walk free from the failures, pains, hurts, regrets, disappointments of the past, to cut it off, to leave it and walk free. Amen. But before we do, Jenna, if you could come back, we're going to come around communion. If you'd like to get your communion ready today. gathering us all because of this. This is not a religious tradition. I mean, you've got to ask yourself the question why I said that every time, you, Jesus said, every time you gather together, every time, every time, do this in remembrance of me, that we'd stop and pause to, to bring us back. I mean, I mean, it, it, it seems quite... Uh, quite a devaluing thing to say but surely this has got to be the greatest reset button for us as the Jesus follower to actually take the time to consider we hold it's the body of Christ broken for us where there was no way there was no way there was no plan B it was this way or no way Christ willingly sinless and spotless lamb of God gave himself 
so that you and I could walk free, so that you and I could be made right before Father God, a just God, loving God, a righteous God, demand a justice. And see, it's important to remember, like, 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 Jesus didn't convince God to, to forget the debt. Jesus paid the debt. And I wonder at the start of 2023, a new year, would, would this be something more than just a, a one day thing? I pray that you would engage Holy Ghost and, and God today, that something would be deposited in your heart, that, that, that in Him we get to reset. At any time that you would stop, at any time that you would recognize, at any time that you would become aware, at any time that there'd be revelation, that, that we can stop and, and allow God into that space again, and He can bring refreshing and healing and wholeness and, and right thinking and, and wisdom. And so this morning, we come around the communion table. We thank you for last year, but we lift this year before you. With all the potential, with all the difficulties, you, you encourage us to be strong and courageous. This is need for it. Our ability to successfully navigate to win, to be a blessing. It's all predicated on what we hold in our hands. That everything that was old, you're wanting to make new. That everything that is broken, you're wanting to heal. To all that's been stolen and forfeited, you're wanting to redeem. So we stop and pause and remember. We do this in remembrance of you. And that night you gave thanks, you took the bread, you broke it, said, this is my body. Freely given for you. I want you to take it and eat it and remember me. Let's eat this morning. same way he took the cup okay thanks he said this is my blood the blood of everlasting covenant there's not another one this is it no plan b everlasting commitment to us an agreement a contract a covenant his blood shed for us the price paid the the way made i want you to take it and drink it doing so remember me let's drink this morning gathering father god we just thank you for the great price that you paid to make a way where there was no way we who were once foreigners aliens excluded from the citizenship of israel have now been brought near by the blood of christ we now can boldly approach the throne of grace in time of need. We now can cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, God, accepted and renewed, redeemed, equipped, empowered. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen.